In my last video, I showed a sneak peek of this mystery box, but you've already seen this video's title, so you know what's in it. Let's open it up. Oh, okay, so inside we've got the main servo unit in the obligatory uh, bubble wrap, along with a bag of connectors and cables. It uh, looks good quality kit, as you would expect. We have the main power connector cable and uh, several terminal adapters for the various interfaces on the unit. I've uh, not seen this type before. There's a little push button to release the cable from the connector. They have the, uh, the company name uh, Wanji printed on the side, although I suspect I'm pronouncing this incorrectly. And then finally, we've got um, two Victron branded RJ45 plugs, which I bet the CAN bus terminator resistors. There's no instruction booklet, um, but with the internet, you don't need these anymore. This unit was kindly sent to me by Victron, although this isn't a sponsored video and they haven't asked me to advertise it. Integrating this device with the DIY BMS could be a huge step forward in int integration, especially as the Victron is one of the market leaders in this space. The servo device is designed to be the central communications hub in, in a Victron system. It acts as the heart of the installation, synchronizing the actions of the solar chargers, inverters, and battery sy systems, as well as providing lots of uh, other types of interfaces, such as tank level sensors and even GPS. These devices are often used in RVs and boats, so having these sort of, sorts of features available makes sense. Looking at the outside of the unit, uh, there are a lot of connectors and interfaces. You have a micro SD card slot, tank temperature and digital inputs, two relay outputs. Uh, the power input here um, can take eight to 70 volts. And then on, on the other side, I'll turn it around this way, um, there are USB ports, uh, HDMI outputs, uh, three of the proprietary VE direct interfaces, uh, which is like a Victron only protocol, um, ethernet network, and then finally the CAN interfaces for the BMS, VE CAN and VE bus. Um, it also supports Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. That's a crazy amount of inputs and connections. You can tell there's a lot of work going on into this, uh, in this device. So before this video turns into an advert for Victron kit, let's take it apart and get a closer look inside and see how it's made. Looks like there's just uh, four screws holding this thing. And the plastic feels very solid and uh, well built. Let's take those out. Yep, just four screws. Okay, will it come apart? Hmm. Oh, okay, I think it's just got a second board inside. Let's slowly, oh, there we go. Okay, so there's the two halves of it. So it's obviously uh, built in two separate circuit boards. I'm uh, not gonna dismantle it any further than this. Um, I don't wanna break anything before I get a chance to make it work with a DIY BMS. You can see a battery there for uh, obviously a real-time clock and keeping settings and stuff. Those are the relays, which are six amp. Looks good. Right, let's put this uh, thing back together. We need to physically connect the DIY BMS to the Victron system. The people over at Victron have recommended that I use the BMS CAN connections and use the Victron BMS CAN protocol. These connect connections are located on the top left of the uh, servo device. If you didn't know, CAN is a communications protocol de developed in the 1980s and now used in almost every vehicle built today. It has a really robust communication design which makes it great for electrically noisy, noisy environments and it only uses two wires plus a ground connection. Over on Wikipedia, you can see a block diagram of how devices should be connected. One point worth mentioning is that each end of the CAN bus needs termination. 
This is simply a 120 ohm resistor placed across the communications lines. Victron achieves this with their, their blue termination plugs and these simply plug into one of the unused cam ports. So that's one side of the CAN bus taken care of. The other end is the DIY BMS controller. If you remove the screen from the controller, you should see a solder pad marked JP1. Just to the right of the CAN bus wire, uh, writing. You can permanently add the terminator to the controller by putting a blob of solder across the jumper. The terminator resistor is already on the board and this just enables it. Another way to do this is to add an external 120 ohm resistor across the can high and low screw terminals. So now I'm going to put some solder across those pads. I've not soldered onto this board for a long time, so a blob of flux will clean up the pads before I start. We're going to need a cable between the Victron and the DIY BMS. Victron publishes the connection information on its website. We need a standard RJ45 plug on one end and uh, bare wires on the other. One way to do this is to use an ethernet patch cable. The connection only needs three wires. So you could cut the cable and then work out which wires go to pins three, eight and seven. These are the ground, can low and can high. Alternatively, you can also make your own cable if you have the necessary crimp tool. Here I'm using an offcut of Ethernet cable and the RJ45 connector. It doesn't really matter which colour color cables you use, although picking a matching colour pair for the high and low CAN bus connections is probably a good idea. I'll use the blue and white in my example, and I'll use green for the ground. So we can just snip off the ones we don't want. Get rid of those little strings. Okay. So now we need to make these roughly the same length. And feed them into the housing. So it's pins number three, seven and eight we need. So seven and eight is easy because that's on the right hand side of this. Connect block and three. It's a little bit delicate. It's difficult to do this while on the camera as well. So one, two, three. And then you push them home. And then hopefully we can use the crimpers, trying to line them not to crush the pliers, the uh, socket, sorry. Give them a squeeze. So, okay, nice and solid. Now the other end, we just need some bare cables. So, we can use these, oops. No, we can't. That's better. And again, we can just trim these back down to uh, keep the ones we want. So on the other end then, it gives us, gives us our uh, can high, can low and ground connect connections ready for uh, screwing into the controller. So now we've got the bare wires from the RJ45 cable. It's going to connect them up into uh, the controller, can low and can high. and the ground connection. A bit difficult to do this on camera. And then the other end is simply connected into the Victron unit. Okay, and now we have the controller connected to the Victron CAN bus network. However, without any software changes in the DIY BMS, it's not going to do anything. And that's the topic for the next video.
Thanks for watching.